Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Welcome back to part five here on Glass Hand for doing some hologram stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into Cinema 4D. There's some things that I want to pick up from last lesson that I forgot to mention. Okay, so uh, we have that live viewer up uh, from the last lesson. Let's close that. What we need to do is, since I have everything at 32-bit, I need to make sure that my render buffer type is set to linear so that all the color information is linear and uh, we'll be able to display it proper, properly in After Effects, okay? So uh, I believe that was the only thing that I missed from last time, except for I want to use the wireframe. I did not check that either. So wireframe, um, let's make sure we're in float linear color space, okay? So that's cool. Let's go ahead and save. I'm gonna come back to my regular startup. Um, let's go and maybe add some slight animation to this stuff. Uh, so it's only render out, I don't know, maybe like 100 frames or so. And let's make sure that, uh, let's see, let's make these lines, the arcs. Let's add some different kind of uh, random rotation to this. So we can grab the fracture group and make sure that the effector is going to be added once we come over to the menu. So let's add some like random rotation to that. Uh, let's say, yep, it's already in there. Uh, right now, <laughs> the position is making it look kind of funky. Um, so, yeah, you could add some more random rotation so that these aren't all sitting on one plane if you wanted to. Uh, let's go into the, uh, I'm sorry, I think I said rotation. I meant position. Let's go to the rotation and change the randomness of this guy, okay? So, this is something, let's see. Uh, you can see that the rotation centers are not correct. Uh, that is not where we want them to rotate from. So let's say, uh, let's see, we need to be able to fix this. So if we actually go into the uh, fracture group and we start spinning this, you can see they're not quite on axis. And uh, let's see if they are here. Yeah, it looks like they're perfectly... Um, on axis in this way. If we go into the front view, we'll be able to see exactly if it is or not. Okay, so let's set some different keyframes on the actual arcs. So this will just make sure that we are getting the proper rotation from the origin of the scene. So it looks like uh, in the B channel, I'm just gonna click there and go to the end and just have this kind of spin in different ways. So um, definitely if you're doing this for a client or if you're just doing it for fun, uh, make sure that you are spinning this exactly how you want so that your design looks really cool. Me, I'm just gonna go through and add some random rotation. So this is just for example. Let's uh, go to the end of the timeline and maybe just change this back to uh, zero or something like that maybe. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, so we just get a little bit of subtle rotation. And let's kind of come back here, go back to the beginning. And just adding some random rotation, like I said. So come to the end, some more rotation, move it up to the top maybe. And you know, for your designs, definitely take into consideration how this is gonna move. So if we play this back, we just get some subtle movement. Looks pretty cool. Uh, in the actual line portion, uh, let's see what can we do here that make this look really cool. I kind of would like these to kind of bounce out a little bit. So let's add a, let's go into the effectors and we'll put this into a group or sorry, let's not put it in a group. I just want to go ahead and change the um, the deformer to object, and then in the parameters, let's go ahead and we want to move this on the X and Y. So let's say f maybe five and five. So if we were to shut this on and off, you can see that they're kind of bouncing um, at that 45 degree angle. So let's say 15 and 15. And then we can come and let's see what else we could do to make this kind of uh, move a little bit more. 
let's just go ahead and change the strength over time. So maybe go into the middle of the part of the timeline, uh, move it down, and then put it back up. We could probably go and add a delay effector to this. What this will do is uh, we need to have this underneath of the plane, and we can set this to spring and turn the strength up so that when it moves, it kind of... Let's see if we actually take these keyframes. Let's not have them the whole timeline. Make them move a little bit faster. We need to be able to see this kind of happen. So we should be able to see this kind of move. Oh, let's change our deformer to object type. And place it beneath it. There we go. I think this is going to work. Hmm. Let's take these guys and put them into their own null. And let's see if we can get this delay effector. Huh, weird. Oh, there we go. We can see it a little bit. Let's see if we have it at like 90. You can see how it bounces just a little bit. So we could we could split this up into let's see these lines looks like every other line Let's take these three lines and we're going to place them into their own nulls. And then we can begin messing with the plane effector and put them into their own groups. Okay, so uh, we can change the keyframes since we have two different plane effectors now so that they all kind of move at their own, um, they're kind of offset. And we could change the, uh, we could keep the delay the same, but let's add some more keyframes to this to keep it a little bit more interesting. Okay, there we go. And maybe add a keyframe here. Just to keep everything moving. There at the beginning, it kind of looks too much like a spring, so um, I'm not really digging that. I think we need to space these out a little bit more. kind of looks more random now. Uh, of course, you can go through and change it how you like. I think you guys kind of get the idea. Uh, for the tendrils, let's do something similar. Let's collapse that group. Um, we could do something with the actual shape. Let's go and add a deformer. Let's add a, let's see, where is it at? A displacement deformer? deformer? So let's see, displacement. I think it's around here. Oh, wow, displacer. There it is. I <laughs> couldn't see it. Um, and let's add a custom shader into here. Let's add a uh, noise pattern. And then we can come down here and start to crank up the contrast. And you can see what it's doing. It's throwing it off a little bit. Uh, if we actually showed the shape, you can see there what it's doing. Um, so we could scale up the, uh, the texture or scale it down to get some uh, some interesting results. So if this was more um, disp uh, sorry subdivided, we could get some really cool looks out of this. Okay, so let's come up to the uh, actual strength. So, yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can actually do with this. 
so it's kind of warp it and then we can actually do the same thing here um, animate the strength of it like so and then we can hide it and you can kind of see how that works um, so you can do the strength and we can come into the actual noise pattern and change the uh, let's see the animation speed if we want to know how fast that is we can right click and say animate we can see it change up there in real time so let's see what that looks like so pretty cool um, if we turn that shape back on we can kind of see how it's moving it's uh it's popping right now uh because we have the contrast so high since i put that contrast up if we uh, don't have so much contrast sorry we need to have at least a little bit you can see that it's more wavy okay so let's kind of leave it wavy and keep it kind of subtle movement so that's looking pretty cool and of course we can always change um, how that is just by the uh, the noise or we can actually come into the displacer object and change the height and the strength okay so there we go we get something really kinda cool looking uh, the last thing we probably need to do is the dotted line we can make this uh, let's do let's see the offset so we're on the first frame keyframe go to the last and just kinda move this up so the one thing about the offset and the keyframes and how it's set up by default in Cinema 4D, if we come into the timeline, it will always do a uh, smooth in, smooth out kind of shape. So if we came into the dotted line, we can see that if you uh, marquee select everything and you hit S, it will frame it up for you. This may uh, be what you want, but if we turn it to linear, then we can see that you know these these will actually give you like a perfect loop. Now I'm not trying to get the loop to be perfect here. But um, that's one thing to kind of look out for. It looks like here we're kind of getting some um, weirdness. So let's see if we can try to change. There we go. It looks like we had to kind of finesse the in-between spaces. Uh, it was popping one on um, that was right over top of the other one. Uh, that could also be because of the interpolation of the actual line so it looks like this is a dotted line arc if we came in here and changed it to uh, natural then I think that may help us out a little more uh, it just kinda depends something to look out for though if you run into that in some of your projects uh, the last thing that we have is the uh, the poly kind of uh, guys here what we'll do is just add oh we already have the random effector so what we could do is let's see we have some different scale and rotation what we could do is just chain animate the strength over time so let's just do something very subtle and um, change this uh, maybe not in the middle we'll have like I don't know 50 percent or so this will just give us a little bit of movement um, there so let's do a kind of a camera move real quick so let's kind of set this up and zoom in uh, so if we had I don't think we have a lot of depth of field but you know if we did have some depth of field we would have to want to you know make sure that the focus is being racked so that things don't go out of focus as we zoom in uh, so we keep our like hero or whatever it is in the scene in focus and nice and sharp uh, one more thing that I want to add is we can come into the camera tags and there is the motion camera tags and if we actually add a motion camera to it uh, let's go into the let's see let's come into the dynamics and let's do like a sorry in the actual motion there's a preset in here that we can do use like a steady cam uh, type of move um, it looks like we kind of got thrown off so let's change let's jump out of our camera 
and you can see there's a little there's a camera guy now which is kind of funny it's pretty cool uh, we can't actually move this camera back what we can do is add a null for the camera um, so we can just this will be our null camera and then we can go ahead and zero this out and we need to move this guy back okay so let's kind of move this down into frame adding this motion camera is just a, a nice little touch let's go ahead and kind of frame this up a little bit better uh, because the when you'll see like as the camera is moving you know you get like this kind of cool effect uh, let's go ahead and make sure we don't have any animation on the camera because it's not going to come through we need to make sure that we're um, back far enough and then as we come in closer we have a keyframe okay so it'll look something like this now uh, obviously <laughs> the uh, motion camera is pretty pretty uh, high right now so the intensity this is pretty cool what we can do is change the head rotation down let's see what that ha does to our footage I kinda want it more slight than that so we can just add let's just say 10 percent to the uh, camera rotation and the camera position so let's see how this looks and it adds just a little bit of variation um, you know like if you're actually trucking a camera in real life you uh, depending on what apparatus you have it on if you're actually using a steady cam like I had put here it would be pretty hard to get it like extremely perfect so it's just fun to mess around with let's see if I can get this a little uh, centered better so it's our child that is doing it to us but it's okay um, we'll just kind of center it up on this x-axis and maybe move it up a little bit more okay so cool uh, one more thing before we render this out let's go into the uh, camera motion blur and enable this and change this to 0.06 and okay that'll be fine Alright, so I think that will do it for this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning into this one. It's kind of long, but there was just some things that I wanted to prepare, some animation, and uh, we'll go ahead and render this out. All we need to do is just make sure that we click the Render to Picture Viewer. We have everything set up. If you have networking, uh, if you have more than one workstation that has an NVIDIA card right now, you can hook that up. We have a tutorial here on the channel. So if you want to learn more about network rendering, uh, definitely check out that video. But thanks a lot, guys. We really appreciate it. Um, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, it helps us keep track. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section below. And definitely subscribe to the channel because we have some really cool stuff coming out for you guys. So uh, I really appreciate it. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.